pretty sure they do. But here's some. Man, let me fucking. Well, here's something funny, right? So now I have to prepare. Listen, so cool. Now you hear something funny. So my my wife comes in here and buys my daughter a bonnet for her hair to keep her hair done, right? Starting her early. Yeah. So I said she buys her the bonnet, puts the bonnet on her hair. Yeah. This is hopefully this keep your hair done longer. I said, oh shit, you gave my baby a ratchet cap. She was like, oh, I love it, mommy. I said, yeah, you love it. She's like, you like it, dad? I said, yeah, fire. I love your little ratchet cat. <laughs> so she, goes, fire. she goes and runs in the room to her brother and says, Kyrie, do you love my ratchet cat? Right. <laughs> Kyrie probably right. looked at her like, what the <laughs> hell? Is, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> anyway. Right. Right. Like, See, you got this fucking baby called it a ratchet cat. Uh, that's what it is. It's a ratchet say. cat. Why is it a ratchet cap, Kev? With the box. Because if you wear it to go to the store, <laughs> you're, you're fucking wearing it, it. you're accessorizing this shit with your The outfit. nigga immediately it's puts it in a negative construction. I don't give a fuck. I can't do that. You can't just you have a bonnet at home so when you go to bed, nah, a you, woman say, or, or a man, yeah, if he yeah. has illustrious hair, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> If you can't, no, you can't wear a bonnet at home. Waking up. Nah, you got to go to McDonald's and Walmart and all the extra shit. That's the thing. They literally buy outfits to they buy pocketbooks to match with their bonnet. Like, come nah, on, man. Uh, you cap it. Are you for real? Who does that? Yo, I seen ladies out in the store, their fucking cat matches the fucking outfit they got on. And then like, yo, y'all, y'all serious. Y'all can't be serious. <laughs> shopping like, for on. shopping for a purse to go with your bonnet is insane. Cat matches the bag. The, the, the carpet the matches the drapes. Always. <laughs> Always. Can yeah. you still ask girls that? <laughs> yeah, no. no, 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 no I got a, I got a wolf. <laughs> hey, yo, remember Kev used to ask that shit all the time, bro? If the carpet Ken matches was, the drapes. would ask you out, out of nowhere. Yo, carpet matches drapes? That's wild. That's wild. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here's the carpet <laughs> matches the <drapes. laughs> Oh yeah, Days I'm proud of. <laughs> we come up a long way, cause what we talking yeah. about? What we talking about? Talk yeah. about what everybody else fucking talking about, man. Your boy, man. Your boy. He's all of our boy, honestly. <laughs> yeah, man. I trust him. I fuck with him too. Like I wasn't like me here in the interview. Kev sent me the shit. I said, right, I'm gonna listen to it because I listen to Club Shay Shay. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna listen to it for for a minute when he was on Good Undisputed. Show. Well, why ain't you yeah. say nothing to Ricky Good Smiley show. then? It was your responsibility too. It ain't my responsibility. When Ricky Smiley, when I heard the Ricky, because I heard the Ricky Smiley, he's not funny interview. to me, by the way. He's not. He's, not. he's never he's really not been funny. funny. He hasn't a little down. All that shit wasn't really that. That funny. was old. It's never funny, and that was funny at the time. But I don't. When's the last time you actually heard about Ricky Smiley? Since I'm a comedy snob, and I think the man is talented. I'll put it like that. But as far as comedy, he's never ever been my cup of tea. Nah, so he when I was watching, I had watched the Ricky Smiley joint first, and he had said the shit about him being Money Mike, and I'm and when I'm watching, I'm like, yeah, I, I had to say to myself like, maybe. And then I said I couldn't see it. I'm like, why would you? Why would you play with me like that? <laughs> no, why would you turn? <laughs> like, why would you let them change your role because you was established in comedy? Why would you let them change your role? From Money Mike, who had a bunch of lines in the movie, was one of the biggest characters in the movie, mm-hmm. to play the Santa Claus that was like here and there in the oh, movie. Okay. Like this, sim- yeah, he was a crackhead. Like the Santa Claus was at the beginning, the middle, here and there, and then at the end. He wasn't like Money Mike throughout the movie. Like you, you seen Money Mike? Him? What's the other a Holy Moly Donut Shops? The Moly? <laughs> that mm-hmm. nigga was funny in there. Like it was certain characters that ran throughout the movie, you know what I mean? But so why would you turn that down to be the crackhead? And really, like what Cat Williams said, like I couldn't imagine Ricky Smiley pulling off the pimp character. Um, I think he said now down, please correct me if I'm wrong. I think he said he wasn't a pimp at first, was he? Like a full on pimp. He was supposed to be a crackhead. Are no, you- he said he didn't want to be a crackhead. I'm talking about Wait, wait, all right, all right. That's what I'm Ricky about, Smiley I'm said. The character yeah. Money Mike. Money Mike was supposed to be a crackhead. It was, was supposed he? To be like he how how Cat explained it and how Ricky no how Ricky explained it because mm-hmm. he did he like went back and addressed the situation. 
Money Mike was supposed to be a guy that hung around. The, remember the strip mall? Mm -hmm. That's sort of like a crackhead character. Yeah. Okay. Cat Williams changed, allegedly changed the character to a pimp type character. Dope. Which, Dope. you know what I'm saying? Iconic, actually, if you really think about it. Which kind of made the, you know what I mean? Made the movie. They so, also said he wrote all the lines, all the lines for Cat Williams, too. I mean, for, um, for Money Mike, too. Yeah. He yeah. brought in Magic Bishop Don Juan. Yeah. Got yeah. a real pimp instead of having somebody play pimp. You know what yeah. I mean? Cube and Cube, conf Cube I heard, confirmed I, I both. I watched Cube because Cube did a sit down. Cube, the ice, confirmed, the ice, ice Cube? Cube, yeah, Ice Cube confirmed that Ricky Smiley did audition for Money Mike. I, but Cube and Cube said he when he auditioned, he said he had a better character that he think he would better fit playing, which was the Santa Claus. Yo, I think people got to understand also. If I tell you that I auditioned for something, now I don't know. I didn't watch the Ricky Smiley interview because he's not interesting to me. But did he say he auditioned for, or he was like, "Yo, I was going to play him," but at the last minute they switched it. He said he was given the role. He was given the role. He said when he said just how he said Shay. He said I got. I'm not not word for word, but he said I was given the role of Money Mike. When I later came back to shoot, that's when they gave me the role. They wanted me to play the role of as the Santa Claus. Let's see, yeah, little Daryl, the Santa Claus. Called him Lil Daryl. But then he, that's what he said on Club Shay Shay. But then when he did his interview with the dude, he had his agent at the time who, who was there with him say he auditioned for the part of Money Mike. And they liked his audition, but Cube then later called him up and said, instead of playing, I know you auditioned for money, I can play playing him. I like you to play the Santa Claus. What? Cube also confirmed that he did let Cat Williams write some of his lines. He said, most of the script was written for money, Mike. He said, I did let Cat Williams put in his put in his input. Yeah. He said, far, I think he said, far as a rape scene. He said it wasn't a rape scene in the movie. He said he didn't, you know, that he didn't put in the movie because he didn't think the shit was funny. Yeah, they was wilding. Why would that have been more funny than him trying to rape him and then crushing his balls with a uh, with was a, it, a was it a like, wrench? Is that what? Yeah, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> uh, I'm a boy, Damon. <laughs> yeah. All you know your balls and a one horse open sleigh. <laughs> That shit was fucking hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> he bought listen, he brought genius to that role, and yeah. it is it's iconic within his own right. I think it's more memorable because of uh Friday at the next was more I remember I saw it with my mom. It was more memorable because of the character of Money Mike and his useless um girl that he had with him. Yeah, so, I went to movies to see that shit too. Yeah, it was more. I definitely don't remember it because of the Santa Claus. Actually, I could have did without the Santa Claus um, in that movie. But Money Mike, he's iconic. Kev still says I'm a boy, Damon, to this day. Like it's just, it's just good comedy. The guy is the guy. He's really good at what he does. So I know we just started in on that, but everybody in the world seen the interview, and he mm. just very popular went in from the beginning. And he went in hard on a lot of people. And now the thing on the internet is called they're doing hashtag the receipts, Cat Williams. <laughs> Where people are confirming these stories that Cat Williams had yeah. with these people. Yeah. These are stories that's been going around for years, though, by the way. He's been saying this for years. He's been saying this for years, but I think with social media, podcasting, See, niggas been watching the clips. People was killing me. We was talking about off the air was people talking about why they call him uh, Shannon Sharp Shay Shay. Like, that shows me that you haven't ever watched this podcast until this interview. This club Shay Shay has been this yeah. since he was on Undisputed, yeah. since he was on the other channel. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If you watch podcasts, he's been had this podcast, has been called that. 
the stuff he's doing now with all these guests is newer. He, you know, he got the nightcap and everything. You ain't been, you ain't been, you ain't seeing Club Shay Shay out of nowhere for no reason, just because he got yeah. Cat Williams on there. You're not seeing it out of nowhere. Like yeah. he's been, this has been in place for a while. And um, I know we were talking about it earlier. And uh, I heard somebody say why they call him Shay Shay, um, which, you know, is a fair question because if you're not familiar with Shannon Sharp, which can I say I was super familiar other, outside of football and, you know, what he was going through at ESPN? Um, not necessarily, Fox, but Fox. he was going through at Fox. Not at Fox, ESPN. excuse me, excuse me, at Fox. And I'm like, all right, like, you know, but Shay Shay, it made sense. Shannon Sharp, all right, cool. And somebody said that this club Shay Shay because. Fox or ESPN owns yeah, yeah. Shannon Sharp, and I'm like, they owned his real name. I and I'm like, yo, Don't we gotta remember. stop coming on the internet and just saying anything like it's fact, bro. What yeah. are you talking about? Right. <laughs> what are you That's saying? It. He made the shit. He made the he he oh made God, bro. he made the Coney like the whole thing with them drinking the yak. He's been doing that when he was on Undisputed. He Shannon would come in there after like LeBron had a big game. Nigga, come in with his mom. Yeah, talk about eating his gummies. Yak. Yeah, I got the yak about to eat me a couple of these gummies. Talk, you know, everybody know what the gummies he's talking about. You just ain't gonna eat no regular gummy bears on. He got the black and mild with the, yeah. you know what I mean? And and yeah, that's where the um character gummy. came from, when the shade character came from. So he's been making this character. So that it, it's just niggas need to watch more podcasts. Like he had all like all these guests I he did. had. Cab Williams and all it was talking about was on Shannon Sharp. He had the Cedric the Entertainer. I watched that one. I watched the Steve Harvey one. Um, shit, I watched the Marshawn Lynch, which was good. Uh, I watched the Ricky Smiley, which was good. I seen the first one he did with him and his brother. Like I've been, like I, I pop in there here and there just to watch this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'm a fan. Of, like I like the show, so I pop in there. They got somebody I want to see. I pop in there. We, but the Cat Williams one was his biggest episode. He even said it. He said um, his other episodes, because I was just watching a nightcap, he said, you know, the one I did with Dion did five million. Uh, Ocho Seco, yours, John, did five millions. Steve Harvey, that did uh, four million. Think about the timeline. It did 10 million in a in day. In one day. Exactly. That's what he, said. he said he went from. <clears throat> Said he went from six hundred thousand follow, like people watching the show, to like one point five million subscribers. Yeah, buddy, that's called you know that, that's called you got one. You got after, one after having one a whole bunch of times. This was just the one. It was the perfect storm. He went in there, and because of the tea, he lit that shit up. It was the best thing that could have happened to him. Imagine starting off. Hey, imagine somebody like us. Starting off the year just with something that you like, oh, this gonna be good, and it winds up changing our lives. Like it winds up, we wind up with a hundred thousand, and and we, what do you call that? Trending, 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 trending everywhere. Trending that, everywhere. That's that's something that changes the bracket. Off yeah. of just this guy having all this, all this, you know, pent up, or if he don't pent it up, but all this ready to ready to go for niggas, and then it's just super entertaining. And then the guy's so intelligent. And he words he words his insults in these in these ways that it's just interesting the whole way through, man. It was, yeah, it, this is great. The way now, he can insult you is next to genius. No, nah, it makes you want to fight him. Yeah, I mean, yeah. some people have that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, the way the way he says that shit. <laughs> he had six thousand hey, books out before he was at the age of twelve. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> But, I call Cap on that. I think he Kev said it earlier. I think he made a mistake. I think yeah, he, well, I'm about to say he's read three thousand books. I think by the age of twelve, he, he that's just got a kid. No, I mean, he even that is a lot of books between. No, we, four we, years, we watched the inter- we watched the interview. He said, he "This said is it. what he said." In, in, in I think mistakenly, he said that in a year he reads three thousand books. He when, said since that age. He said from the age of eight to twelve, he's read three thousand books a year. That's what, That's he, what said. he said. But That's I think he. Fun. But he also misquoted and said that the Kings of Comedy was like in two thousand nineteen. They had to go yeah, back, to and ask yeah. him again. Yeah, I mean, he was drinking before the show. He was drinking during the show. He was getting his shit off. I, think I mean, it's it's understandable if he's just blurting shit out at the time. 
I actually mean to say this, but he's going, no. but he was going in for so long and so fast, throwing so much shit out at once. You know what I mean? You kind of give him the benefit of the doubt when somebody's yeah. telling a lot of people. Yeah, you just let him <laughs> let him get a couple off. Like, all right. Like, when he when he said he could read at the age of three, I like I believe that. Like, so I believe it. Yeah. Because the reason I believe it, my Kyrie, my son, the autistic, at the age of three, he's reading like he's reading shit that he see, and I'm looking at him like this ain't, you know, kids see words and they memorize the easy words like dog and shit like that. Mm -hmm. But you sitting there and you see Walgreens and you're saying, yeah, oh, Walgreens at three. Because you're reading a sign or you see another sign that says something else, but you're getting close to the word because you're sounding it out. Like he would do that at three years old. He would just be reading stuff that he see. He was very nonverbal when he was younger. You know, it'd be, I, you know, that's why I call, you know, give him the nickname he got. But, you know, I mean, he's gotten better since, but he would see words and he would just sit there and just read them. So, like, I can believe that. You know what I'm saying? That ain't hard to believe. <laughs> well, just his intelligence overall, it doesn't. Yeah. It's not hard to believe that yeah. he's had the capability of being extraordinary at a young age. Yeah. Just the way he words things as an adult, you know. What I mean, that's not something that you just pick up. You know, what I mean, in a year's time, that man has been doing this comedy thing for well over twenty years. Number one, <clears throat> and number two, you can see it in 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 how he is in his composure and his posture how well he uh how fluently he speaks on everything he's passionate about yeah you know so and not to, not to mention he's been saying like you said Dre, he's been saying the same shit over and over again for years yeah yeah so what you think about the illuminati shit yeah that's what i'm the getting story into. the story he was talking about that illuminati shit are oh, you talking about ludicrous no nah, no nah. everybody I mean, got everybody. everybody the thing about it is gary owen said something about that as well that was just my response. I yeah, just, I'm gonna let you take control. Go ahead. No, I just I, I see you seen that. I'm guessing you've seen the same one too, right? The, the Gary the, Owens. Yeah, yeah. The Gary Owens basically said he was in his beginning of his career. Say he was sitting, no he was ass. sitting down, and the dude was he was like, I guess, looking for a part or something in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And the dude was giving him like vibes, like did, he was trying yeah. to come on to him. Yeah, I got something to say about all of this. And he Gary said, he, said you, he was like, you ever, you ever hear about the moments where they were like, would you suck a dick for a million dollars? I was actually about to, I had came to this question. This was happening now. And the answer was, no, I'm not going to suck a dick for a million dollars. <laughs> no. <laughs> Which is, yeah, nigga, for real. You shouldn't be already sucking the dick. Look, I want to know, know this. Unless you already be sucking dick, then I guess why, it's just come up. Why <laughs> in the world does it have to? Why do so many of those powerful people that they speak of, why are so many of them, why do they want men? Because I, no, this is a let me ask you, just think about it for a second. I'm going to explain it a little further. That's why question. do, why is that the thing? Like, yo, I'm a guy in power. I got a wife. I got kids. Like, you know how they, they set them up and shit. Why? Because now we got to ask ourselves a deeper question. If that's the showing case. dominance. Yeah, that's that could that could very well be that's it because it just because to me why aren't there more women why aren't there more superstar women because you would think that the, the guy that's like whatever hey let me get this woman in here to do this shit then put her on rather than hey guy you know what because i want to show I, you i control you Come because what because you will see more of the me too from women where they're going to stand up for something that happened to them Rather than a man be embarrassed and say, I was raped by this dude who paid me money to keep or, my mouth shut. Or, well, did you watch the interview with Terry Crews on Club Shay Shay? He was talking about that. Hey, yeah, hey, I he tried to watch that. He, 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 he had a dude, he had a dude grope him. He had a dude grope him. He said the dude grope him. He talked about that somewhere else before the Shay Shay yeah. show. Yeah, he, he said he got groped, but he said he couldn't fight back because it would have just ended his Hollywood career. I get all right, so I get that. I get that. My point is this: let's try to focus on why do you think that? Because I think it's something really interesting in there. Why do you think that's the way they go? Why is it that? Because if you let me ask you a question: if you were in power, you're a guy, you're powerful as fuck, and you know I got to get this person. I want this person. He wants something. 
and I want him to sign this thing where I basically own everything. But you know, I'm like, why is that where you go to? Why, why, why would you say I'm gonna just get him to suck my dick and I know everything gonna be all right? This That's is weird. weird. It's a way it's, that you. It is weird. I don't. I don't have an answer for that. I do. I got an answer for like it. Like a like one that would actually make sense to right. us. I'm gonna say because is when you're in power like that, you want to show that with your money and your wealth and your power, you can make anybody do anything. The most humiliate you. That right there is humiliating. The most the most humiliating thing you can do to a man, and you can see. Whether or not I can control you, like I own you, I That's own I said, you dominant. so much. I can make you go against the thing you believe in, which is the most thing that all men believe in is their fucking manhood. Your manhood is the most sacred fucking thing to you. Like, 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 think about it. niggas go to jail and will fight to the death to protect their manhood. Manhood in jail. Yeah. Now you're in a room where a guy is not physically dominant over you but he has the power and he says i'm going to test your manhood i'm going to strip you of your manhood I'm gonna pull my dick out you're going to suck my dick and after you suck my dick i'm gonna have control over you and, I, and anytime i'll see you and i want to do something degrading to you i can do it you I think that's what diddy did yeah I wanna, yeah i want to grab your ass i can do whatever <laughs> Yeah, but don't. But all right. See, this is what that's I'm saying. humiliating. I, but that's no, what I, I'm I get what you're saying. But like, why go there? Why? To me, it's like I'm gonna grab this man's ass. Don't that? Don't you are gay? So my point care. is, why is that a thing that you do? Because my thing is, what you gonna do with a gay guy? A gay dude come in and he like, all right, nigga, what's up? He grabbed the fork and the knife and he ready to go. Oh, what can they, you do to humiliate him? They do hum they do humiliating shit to the female. They do humil they do when when from what I hear about these guys that's in this power, they do the most uh, the most humiliating thing that you wouldn't do. The most so if he was a, a gay man, whatever you wouldn't what would ever question you being a gay man, they will make you do that. Give me an example. <laughs> oh, for a gay guy. A gay guy, you know, whatever they can That's come in example. and just say, Here one. go, gay guy. Everybody thinks a gay guy, oh, he there's a man, he's he's gonna because he's gay, he's automatically gonna have sexual acts with him. It's like, no, he can say we can do a sexual act, and then they bring in three guys and they fucking gang rape him. You get what I'm saying? That's fucking humiliating to him, and they and they do this to they gang rape him, and they say, If you fucking come out and tell anybody i'll end your fucking career and you can tell anybody anything nobody believe you because you're gay anyway they'll just say you would just you got high and drunk and had sex with what four or five different men but i got the i got the whole way through yeah i got yeah i got the power over you that i just fucking raped you i took something from you you know what i mean i took this i took something from you and you can't get it back because it'll cost you your career and nobody believe you if you talk about it. So I got power over you. Or women, they fucking sodomize them with weird fucking objects and shit like that. So to a straight man, the, the, the worst thing you can do to a straight man who says he's a straight man and he loves men, they say, here, you're going to suck my dick. And you're going to enjoy it. And every time I see you, you're going to do it. <laughs> and it's not, it's over. What? All right. That's facts, though. They do humiliate. It's not facts. That's my point. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's opinion. Oh, look at look at Harvey it's Weinstein. Conjecture. What's the nigga Harvey Weinstein? The nigga that sure. you heard the shit he was doing to people. Like, okay. come on, man. I would, I you know what? Here, hey, hey, I'm gonna bring this up to you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring you up this up to you because people say about the Cat Williams thing. Have fact. Though. If I told you, if I told you ten years ago. This place of Epstein Island existed where they got these rich and powerful men. They fly out, and I start naming these men, and they fly these men out to have sex with underage kids mm -hmm. that they kidnap. And I'm telling you, these powerful men do this shit. Would you believe me? Ten years I ago. I wouldn't. You're right. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Because it seems so fucking, it seems so far fetched and so fucking outlandish that it's like it's hard for you to wrap your head around. Like, why the fuck? Yeah, would this person go there or that person? Come on, mess with a kid like he can have sex with any woman he wants. 
No, that wouldn't seem outlandish to me. Uh, you know, you would you be, no, would you believe we watched it? as fact. Would you believe I would, it? If I came I would, out and if did someone, an interview with Doja, if someone was to say, uh, you'd have to have some credit. It'd be hard to be like, all right, well, how do you know this? Well, that's you know what I'm saying. But, if, but, if but in my if heart, Pat if you were to say something like me, I wouldn't doubt it. That's what I'm saying. I wouldn't doubt it. If I would Cat be like, well, well if, ago, if you have it. evidence for that, for sure, you need That's to different. say something about it. But I wouldn't doubt it. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't be in disbelief. Like, nah, that ain't happening. If Kanye West in his because current state Because motherfuckers do it with no money. Motherfuckers, if, motherfuckers, was, motherfuckers will have sex with underage kids and don't have nothing to give, uh, nothing, no pot to piss in. Oh. So a motherfucker with money who who's into that type of thing, that's what they're going to use their money for. The so shit that they Kanye like to do. West in his current mind state told you that years ago. Would you believe him? I wouldn't doubt it. A it nigga that, would, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me step in. Let me step in. Would you I believe him? Wouldn't, I think wouldn't doubt and believe is two different things. I don't doubt aliens exist. But if somebody told you when you was young, like, yo, alien just came down to Miami and walked through the stores, I'm like, I don't know if I believe that. But I wouldn't doubt it. Like, oh, I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, it's but you, different things. Because yeah, if you you're don't, gonna need, you're going to need proof to believe something. So when I say that I wouldn't believe it, I would need the proof, of course. Yes, I wouldn't doubt it until you give me proof. But I'm like that with everything. I need proof with that's, every that's, single thing somebody that's tells the point. me. That's, that's the point. But, okay, but so that doesn't, recently, that, doesn't leave, that doesn't leave room for me to be like, nah, that didn't happen though. Because that makes well, okay. that makes you in. Are you in disbelief then? Uh, speaking, Are you saying, saying to somebody like, "Yo, that's not happening"? Okay, we're we'll stick, we'll sticking with the Cat Williams thing. You talked about the Diddy sh- situation, Diddy doing shit. We not too long ago, an interview with Diddy's bodyguard was talking about how he was guarding the room for Diddy, and and ja Rule was in there, and ja Rule, what was his cousin or something, his came knocking on the door. Yeah, huh? His cousin was looking for him. Yeah, yeah, he came banging on the door. Mm-hmm. Looking for him, and the security guard stopped him, and he fucking wound up barging in the room, and fucking Diddy and ja Rule come out in towels. Mm-hmm. Like everybody, when they heard that story, everybody was like, "Oh man, come on, whatever." Then the Cassie shit comes out. It's like, so. But this is this is this is more to my point though. When it comes to just gay sex having, we not talk. That's what I mean. Like with all of these guys, this is not just something they're doing for power. Like, get Diddy likes gay sex, allegedly. Well, who was it? Was it Marvin Gaye? So, so now we're talking about people because they, they put TD Jakes in it and all that stuff. So now we just talking about people who just like gay sex. Well, they may they may use it for power, but my point being is, why are all of them gay? Because maybe a lot of men like that are are gay, and they just scared to come out and say they're gay. Right. You so know that, what I'm saying? So so. Understand why I'm going with it. Why are they the ones that rise to power? If all of them, because because if you go by um, who is it, Professor Griff, one of those people who everything everything is if you if you get any type of success, that just means that you sold your soul to the devil or that you secretly gay or you gave you like nobody can just be successful because they're successful. Everybody just has to give up gay stuff. So my well, point you have to give up is, stuff. Okay, sure. whether it be a family member. You know that was the biggest thing going around Hollywood. Like a lot of people sold their family members. Yeah, I know, because you can't just be successful. Because, but you can't, but you can, and that's the thing. I think you can be successful, but there is a lot of. Why are they gay? Answer to that. Because, because not gay. Why is it wild? You ever heard it? What was the ancient city that God destroyed? What was it? Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah. The wild shit that was going. Or was they two cities? I forget it was it was side of me, but it was just a lot of stuff going on there. Wild sex acts, uh, men with men, women with women, just mm-hmm. just these big orgies and shit like that. Sound or right. you know what I mean, shit like that. It like which was a lot of rich and wealthy people in that city. A lot of that people in that city had money and had power. Man, is I guess when you have that much power and you had you can have sex with anyone. Like if some men are. Crazy like that. Maybe they had can have sex with any woman in the world. Anything they <clears throat> find is beauty in a woman, they can have sex or had sex with them. It's kind of fire, as long as they're not. So underage. the next thing they would probably go to is like, you know what? I did all of this. 
this you hear, man. You're where you go, right? <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> yo, because you know, you just look up at the ceiling. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, like <laughs> it's it's, it's they look all the women. Man, like like this man is. I find this man attractive. I. Have you ever uttered that sentence in your fucking no, life? No, I have sex. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm I've good, never dog. uttered that sentence. So that's what I'm trying to say. I get what you're saying. And I'm doing this. Obviously, this is more for conversational purposes. But yeah. it's like, why are they the ones in power? Is it a requirement? Who am I reporting to the, where they state where I have to check the box? Like, oh, gay? Sure. I, but I now, I could, now I could be in power. I don't you think it's so I'm much. The, I don't think it's so much the thing is being gay. I think it's the thing of you. You're you're getting the peek behind the curtain into the secret society of wealth, and they gotta have something that they can hang over your head that they know will be humiliating and detrimental to your career. So if you're the ultimate ladies' man and you're coming up in the rankings of of being successful and having power and being known and being this fucking star. Now you want to take this next step to ascend. It's like, you're the ladies, man. All the women love you. I'm going to do something. I'm going to fucking rape you, take pictures of it, have documentations of it and make you sleep with these men. And I'm going to hold this over your head. You are, you've seen behind the curtain. You got to see behind the curtain. You can't tell people what goes on behind this curtain because if you do, I release, I release this shit and they'll believe me before they believe you. I control the media. I control the newspapers. I control other people's careers, just like I control yours now. So I can control the whole narrative to your story. So shut up and stay in line. I got two more questions, two more questions, two more questions for both of y'all. And, and we can just have a discussion or we can pass by them. What would be your favorite thing to make people do if you were in power? That's number one. And number two, that's if though. that's it, hold on. And number two, if there are people that are doing these gay things, right? That, that, that that's their shit. To me, there's somebody over top of them because the people who are so there's there's the guys who own the record companies and shit like that, who are in power, who are super wealthy, and then there's the people who control the world. It's a whole different thing. The people who control the world, you're not necessarily that's necessarily hearing about them making people, you know, suck they dick or something like that. But the record company owners and the owners of NBC and shit like that, you might hear about that with them. My my thing is clearly there's a hierarchy. OK, why is it that when those people, you know, what I'm saying like, so anyway, I'll let you think about that. But answer the first question. What would be your favorite thing to make people do? I, 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 I'm sorry, man. You can't, I, you can't entertain that question for me. I can't. Because Your boy. I, 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 I just can't. I just can't. That I don't like doing you going if I'm in power. And I'm and what is it like you pay? Obviously, you paying them at some you're in power. services. You want their masters, yeah, yeah. and they won't give them to you. The point is, <laughs> you, you can't think of no <laughs> games, can you? I can't think of no. Everything is like simple minded shit. Like, nah, you got to. You're gonna be my working for me. You're gonna be working overtime to get what you need to that's get. That's my point, bro. You know that's what I mean? My but, point. But, but yeah, no, I couldn't even think of nothing because you don't. That's my yeah. point. This is my point, yeah. <laughs> my only point. And now, once again, I just want us to think about it. And I'm—I promise I'm gonna leave this alone. But I just think it's a good we hit on we hit on something that, okay, mm -hmm. if all of these guys are saying if the owner of if Diddy, let's not even say Diddy, let's say Harvey Weinstein, these are not the ultra rich. These are the ultra rich, but there's people above them who control the world. Why is it that 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 tier of man says? I know how to get stuff done. Send that guy in here. I'm going to pull my dick out and make him suck it. Because to me, something ain't lining up, bro. Because it's the same thing with, like, them, the, the top tier people that rule the world. Like, they send, they got government agencies and shit they're in control of to go destabilize governments to put their puppets in, in power to rule a country and make it operate the way they want to operate. That's why they fucking bomb the shit out of these you know, quote unquote Muslim countries and shit like that, because those people are strong willed and they have money just like them, and they're not so easily and willing to submit to the I would rest say oil, of oil, but you got it too. Whatever. Yeah, oil. They're not willing to submit to the ways of 
of Western thinking. Like the people in the, uh, the Saudis, the people that own um, like the Abu Dhabi, all them sultans and shit like that. They got money that rival the money of the fucking of of the Rockefellers and stuff like that. Because Rockefellers was nothing but some poor people that came over from fucking England. They came to a new country and came to it while I was young and in this infancy and fucking just started dominating, controlling shit and slowly building up their wealth. I you know, they smart. yeah, they built up their wealth compared to people who in these Muslim countries who've been rich since biblical times. You get what I'm saying? Who has just been having this shit passed down. That's why they always bombing them. They always making the Muslims to be out the bad people. It's like I we don't they don't they haven't yet to got control of that shit. You get what I'm saying? So what they do, they spend their own narrative about these people. They make them seem like they do stuff. They hire the people allegedly like the Bin Ladens, which was crazy because didn't Bin Laden have a picture with Bill Clinton? And then he turns out to be and who they was funding. They was funding this this Taliban group at one time. I'm just like, let you talk. I don't because I don't know. I don't yeah, know anything. I don't know about that. Words. Yeah, that's but what I'm saying. It's like you you was funding these people to fight the Soviets and all that shit like that. The allegedly. Taliban and uh, allegedly, but it's is if you watch the History Channel, you will see this shit. Just got dual. Nah, I still think it's according to the Book of Kev, but I'm a I, like I said. <laughs> okay, I, no, right. I'm not. I'm not even trying to play. I'm just gonna... I, I'm not good at, 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 at I'm not first good at first kind of I don't know any <laughs> I don't know any of that to be true not even because you're saying it but just because we just don't know so me I can't I can't say oh yeah you're right because I'm like I have no idea bro I don't know why I don't that's, know why and that just goes enough. back to what you were saying earlier Dre like like that's a scenario where they're telling Kev that this happened and Kev is just believing like that's that's no, actually in the 1980s no, in the 1980s, the Russian Afghanistan, the Taliban's fought against the Soviet Union invasion during the 1980s. Go watch the History Channel. I watched the History that's Channel. Not what we're about. I, don't, I don't understand. Now, what but you get, but no. okay, but I'm I'm bringing it full circle for you. I'm bringing full circle for you. You turn you these people that y'all funding the fight against the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. y'all help them out. You can't get in control of these fucking Islamic states because the super, you know, the people that run the world want that. Them to be in line with them too. So what you do? You hire them allegedly to do some shady shit in America, blow up the twin towers in the fucking Pentagon. Now you make all Muslims look bad. Assuming, now the world against the Muslim, and you try to strip assume, power from. Assuming that. that assuming. Was, I'm just alleged. That's, that's why it's all alleged. That's why I say it's all alleged. It's all. But, it's all. But, but, it's all fairy dust. They they could tell you any. That's. But the war That's is true. real. That war in the Taliban war, I, that was a real thing that happened in history. That's I, factual. You can go look that up. You can I watch know. that anywhere. You can watch the news. You can go back and watch the old news clip <laughs> of the Soviet fighting. That's real. I know. What I I'm know. saying is fairy dust is make believe is that the government secretly hired them to do, pull some shady shit later on in life. That's alleged. And that's fairy dust and tinfoil hat thinking. Well, everything else is like that's based in concrete fact that happened. No, that's so. I'm 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 making more of my point, like which I love this conversation. So I want us to keep going, and 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 we can talk about cat and all that shit. But like even with the the the, the gay overlords, that's what I'm saying. It's all it's all at until somebody. Because here's what I find interesting. Gary Owen said this also. He said, "Yeah, man, it was a guy who did this." I'm not saying no names. You can't. Let me ask, let me ask you a question. I, I get it. Let me ask you a question. If a nigga, if you go, if it's podcast time, like, hey man, I got a million, I got, I got thirty million for y'all. I got thirty million for y'all. Keep working my nine to five. Listen, 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 listen. I got that. thirty million for y'all, but I'm gonna need something from all of y'all, and it's going to involve gay sex. We know we're not doing that. We know this, but we we all gonna sit there and be like. Yo, let's, I'm not never speak, let's never speak of this. Let's never speak of this. It take everything not to beat that nigga the fuck up in that room. All of us, because Kev can fight. I can, I can at least throw a couple, you know what I mean, hangmakers in there. But we not going to just sit and be quiet like, nah, man, somebody did it, but we can't say. I'm going to say, Diddy tried to fuck us all, so we yeah, beat that nigga the fuck up. And that, yo, if you're doing business with him, watch yourself. 
blah, 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 blah. Mr. Farrakhan, I need you on my side so you can protect me. Boom, something. All of them like, oh, I can't say who it is. All right, yo, everybody, can't, everybody can't, say, can't say who it is. Cool. Because the reason they can't say who it is because, dog, I'm pretty... These people in power get something over a lot of people. You can't say, like, look at... Um, you gonna wake up and, uh, you look at... Um, be the, dead. Um, you what's her name? What's her name? what's her name? I suck nobody dick. What's her Not name? You, um, man. I'm talking about Monique. Them. Monique. Remember what they did to Monique? She tried to fucking tell what was going on. Yeah. That bitch couldn't get a Netflix special. They stopped her from even doing shows. Like, they fucked her money up for she doing had a shows. Special. They just wasn't paying her what she no, 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 no. rightfully deserved to get paid at it. the time. Yeah, and she, she, she didn't want to, she didn't want to take what they were. They were offering everybody else millions and they were trying to offer her a couple yeah. hundred K or something like that. When she, shot, when she said Oprah name and, um, she did. and she Tyler, did. Perry. Tyler Perry, mm-hmm. somebody else in the third person. She she came out and did another interview. Say yeah, I can't book shows. Mm-hmm. They blocking me from booking shows. I can't provide and make money from my family. Like it mm-hmm. took Steve Harvey, which I wonder what happened. That somehow mm-hmm. he was he cut her off. He cut her off for a minute. Mm-hmm. He just every he cut her off. Kevin Hart started. She said it. Kevin Hart, who was a little uh, her homie, who she looked out coming up in the business. He cut her off. A lot of people cut her off. He didn't come up in L.A. anyway, so it don't matter. Yeah. A lot of people cut her <laughs> off. Niggas wouldn't fuck with her no more because she went and fucked with the superpowers. She went and fucked with the superpowers of the blacks. I think it's Diddy, Oprah. Is it John Singleton? John Singleton is dead. Yeah, he's dead, but he was a lot. But she, I think he died. But it's Oprah, and Tyler song. Perry, Diddy, Jay-Z. Those are people in... Who did you think Jay-Z sucked? That's another question I got. I don't think Jay Z suck no dick. Right. All right. I think Jay. I think Jay just said I ain't doing shit. I think Jay did the shit that Cat Williams <laughs> did. I, I think what Cat Williams did. Cat Williams like peeked behind the curtain and skated and had the information. And he's always leaking it. So what did he give up? He didn't give nothing. He got because remember Exhibit did an uh, interview. In a, Exhibit dude did an interview. He was saying he was walking with a uh, into a party. And it was, he seen it was mad bitches in there, and he was looking. They everybody was doing their thing, and he said he opened one curtain up, and he seen some shit he wasn't supposed to see. Curtain is funny. And that's what that's what they always say. They called the curtain. Yeah. Exhibit said I got the fuck up out of there. Mm-hmm. He said I can't speak on who I saw. He said I can't tell you who I went to the party with. He said I just got the fuck up out of there. He did that so. Cause once you name a once you name drop who you went to the party with and who you seen doing the act, yeah. Well, listen, this is what I this is what I say. Two things: how you know motherfuckers telling the truth, and how person is lying. And 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 if you're fucking telling the truth, you get blackballed. If you fucking lying, your ass to get sued for defamation of character. <laughs> get what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I do. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great area, but you're, you're you're mostly right, honestly, because it's like you'll see the people that you know nobody will fuck with them, all types of shit. You'll label you crazy, even though I do think Jaguar right is is a bit of crazy, but I do think there's some truth there. But I think that's all part of it too. That's all part of the blackball. The blackball is to make you look crazy. You gotta yeah, look crazy. Yeah. Remember, they went on a run making Cat Williams look fucking crazy. Yeah, on, yeah. A, on a long run. Locking them up. Locking him up, and beat him up, up the little was, kid. Yeah, when he was up with the little kids, so he had to look crazy. But then, then you know the beautiful thing, bro. That I, that I think about hearing about this guy. Um, hear the people with the good stories, and you start to understand, like, yo, that was some bullshit they tried to do to him back in the day with the kid, like putting him on camera and him getting on fights with kids, him getting arrested. This nigga Boosie just told the story. He said, yo, he came home from jail. He ain't had shit. Cat Williams invited him to his show. He said after the show, like he had a good time after the show, he just threw, like somebody just threw some shit in his car. Like one of Cat's people threw some shit in his car. He thought it was like, he thought it was something. I forget what he said he thought it was. But it was weed. He said I thought it was weed. It was weed. It like, yeah. Right. 15,000. That ain't the only, that's not the only story like that. And you think somebody who, somebody who genuinely be doing, that's not the only story. Be doing yeah. shit like that. He not the he not the guy they tried to paint him to be. He not that. He's not. 
But I think what happened, I think what happened to Cat is, and Cat says it, Cat said he goes to see the shit and he keeps the receipts. Mm-hmm. And he and he sees what's going on. He said, I he's not scared to name drop the name, so people are hesitant to fuck with him because they don't want to get out of that as these people that are doing these wild, this wild shit, so they leave him alone. Mm. And when you fuck with him, that's when he start bombing your ass. Like him, I just feel like he could. He's like he could be easily raped because <laughs> small. Uh-huh. He's small. No. That's why. So my thing is, if you want to go after anybody, <laughs> him, Kevin Hart, all them little niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Hart, they just. They just they 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 got that nigga. But what, you know what's another funny thing Cash said, dog? Like, yeah. why does all of us gotta get like why they all make us gotta get in the dress? Like yep. I was yep. I was watching this Dave Chappelle John. Which goes Cat to your Williams, point, by the way. Which goes to your Cat, point. Yeah, Cat Williams was talking about that shit. So Dave Chappelle, remember he did the movie with Martin. I think it was Blue Street. Mm-hmm. You remember with Martin, they was boys and he locked them up. Dave Chappelle tells her this is a while ago. This is Dave Chappelle way. before they say he went crazy and turned down 50 million. He said, Yeah, man, they try to uh put me in a dress. Say, Yeah, we got a funny scene. We're gonna have Martin dress you up as a dress after you get arrested, and he's gonna walk you out as a prostitute. I think it's really funny. He said, Somebody he said it was like the uh the guy that was doing the next scene. Mm-hmm. He was like, Yo, I'm not doing that. He said, I could do something else funny. He said, next thing you know, the producer came in and says, mm-hmm. hey, man, we, we really think this scene would be funny if you wear the dress. Why won't you wear a dress? He said, I'm not doing that. He said, the head of the studio came in and said, yo, man, why you not? Why you don't want to wear the dress? It's a funny scene. Everybody think it, it'd be funny for you. Do You should do it. He said, I'm not doing it. He said, I told three other people I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. And he said that the head of the studio said, you're you're real difficult to work with, which is the term they give anybody who don't do they want them to do difficult to work with. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to think, was that the last movie, Blue Streak, that Dave Chappelle was in? Um, that was that maybe was big budget. It could have been because yeah. you know he okay. he did other little stuff. Um, but he's so talented that he still shined in those things. So like, undercover brother and shit. Like I was that. just about to say that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Before- that was before Blue Streak. Was it? Was it? That I, I don't gotta, know. That I, I don't gotta know. look up timeline because remember he did that undercover brother. He did Nutty Professor. Like he, that's the that thing. Was, yeah, that was way. That was way before. Yeah, Blue that was Street. way before. Yeah, but he was starting to come up in the world. That's what. That's what he said about uh, Kevin Hart, which was another funny thing about him being a plant. Yo, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. But I watch comedy, and when he said he came from the east and west. A lot of comics, like you watch, like I watch a lot of Rogan, and he has a lot of different comics. And I watch Sh- Shannon Shark. I always I like watching the comics because they re- they entertain him. Mm-hmm. But they always they all have how they do. They start off in their area, wherever they be at. Say they're on the East Coast, yeah. they start off over there, boom. Then they move to Hollywood, and then in Hollywood they go to, you know, they start going that to factory. the. The Laugh Factory was the one. The one run by Mitz uh, used to be run by Mitzi. Uh, everybody's there. Paul it Mooney. It was a lot um, of yeah. It was um. It was I know it's a Laugh Factory and it's it's another one, but it's a bunch of them. Like you do the circuit. Yeah, but it's the big one that everybody was in. Paul Mooney, Richard Pryor, uh, Dave Letterman, Seinfeld came through there. I can't think of name, but all these comedians yeah. come up through there, and people, producers from Hollywood, come yeah. see them in there and start. Yeah. Giving them TV, sh- they give them TV shows. Usually, they start off with a TV show, yeah. and you you build up to your TV show. Well, he, I think, what Cat was trying to say, he mainly Kevin only mainly did East Coast. Yeah, came to the West Coast, never did the West Coast circuit of comedy, mm-hmm. but somehow automatically landed the deal. Mind you, when Kevin Hart came up, it it Count really it. was his social media, and if you're only doing the stuff in New York and in New York, I can get. New York, you can get spotted by somebody, I think. But if you only even doing New York, Philly, a little bit of Boston, New York, Philly, and Boston, it's hard for a dude that's on the West Coast to want to come out here to see you. Yeah, but do material I mean, give you a but, show. But let me let me let me let me say this though. When it comes and, and you know it's because it's my Philly defense. Like you know, what I'm saying 
I do think that when you when you are talented, when you are talented, there is the right path that can open for you. My thing is this: if I'm a person, like we know we know where Ke- Kevin was at. I forget the damn place <laughs> on South Street. Losing, losing shoes. Losing no Stinger. Nah, Stinger. Not, it, it ain't that. I don't know what you're talking about. No it's South Street. What? No, I'm, I'm not even trying to play you. I have no idea what you're talking about. There's a place that I think t- t- Toray Toure is like the, the main comic that be over there. I think we, we might have went over there or maybe we didn't. I don't know. But that's, that's where he would work. All right, cool. The point is sometimes it might be somebody who sees you, right? Dame Dash always talks about the fact that he put Kevin Hart in his first movie. If I'm a new, if I'm a new movie writer, if I'm a writer, a new movie producer, and I see a funny guy that I can get for the cheap, right? Somehow put him in my movie as the star. Why? Because I don't have a big budget. He's funny and talented. I put him in my movie. Boom. From there, he can be somebody that other people see and say, oh, oh, they got something over there. My point is, like, everybody don't got the Cat Williams story. Everybody don't got the Eddie Murphy story. Everybody don't got that story that is a comic. There's niggas who's just talented and it just doors open. Now, I'm trying to think who let's though. Be, let's be you. I mean, you you don't know every fucking body, but the point being is that there's <laughs> other places, there's other stories. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now I don't, I don't know everybody. I know big comics like Kevin Hart that came through. It's always one black that they you, let through the door. Would you call Kevin Hart? I know, but we we talk about conjecture. We talk about okay. conjecture, like oh, the one that they let through. What I'm saying is this, you can't argue the fact that there is a different way of doing things to get on. Where he is now, though, might require a little bit of butthole rubbing or or in or public public uh embarrassment, like you said. Um which happened, which was the divorce with his wife, which was the public embarrassment that he went through. Dress, divorce with his wife. It could be anything, yeah. it could have fucked him, whatever it is. After he got to a certain point, they was like, all right, my nigga, like, you're going to have to give up something. I don't know what it is. Um, I was going somewhere else with it, too. But um, it could have been like that, though, because that's Dame Dash talks about that all the time. Oh, I put him in the first movie. Like, that's a thing, bro. Like, everybody don't got that story. I was going to take it somewhere else, but I forgot. Think about the thing is, uh, just to circle back to what you said, Dre, about them all having the same wives. Imagine, oh, if, that. imagine. I didn't say that. Cat said that. Well, I mean, to circle back on a point that you made about what Cat said, that help you out a little better. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> imagine they. they you give they me one of them. Them, Look, look, you're gonna have to get called cheating player because when you in this circle, we all got the same looking wife. So what we gonna do is we gonna put you in this situation. You are gonna fail. You are gonna get divorced, and then you are gonna marry this beautiful woman right here, and then you be part of the club now. That's a funny the thing. That's cool. the, they all they all gone through crazy divorces. Steve Harvey went through that crazy ass divorce. Which I don't know. Which then, pisses me he, off. He, he, always, he says Steve Harvey. He says Steve Harvey was talking about he was broke. He was never broke. He was making three thousand dollars a show doing five shows a week. Yeah, <laughs> that shit was that shit was crazy when they start when he started laying out the facts on Steve. I'm like, damn, Steve. He said, I was homeless. That nigga wasn't homeless. I'm like, oh, he said, took my story. I, oh, they see, I call Kevin that too because you don't know his, you don't know the nigga. Like, you oh, know him, is. but you don't know the nigga. Yeah, I, that right there. But the joke stealing shit, yeah. that's a real thing. Which is funny because people, if you ever listen to comic interviews they or watch it. comics or watch comics in their early specials or coming up, you see how they. You might hear the same joke over and over, but it's told a certain way until it's to the point where it's perfected. Yeah. That's what they do. When, yeah. So when jokes still, I remember Dave Chappelle talking about a story. He said he had did a joke when he was 17 and the comic said, hey, I'll pay you 50 bucks. Can you just let me use the joke mm-hmm. tomorrow for my next set? So Dave said, I, I took the 50 bucks. He, he said, Dave said, just for the one night. He said, yeah, just for the one night. He said, that motherfucker, he said, he said, he was doing my joke every single night. He said, I got pissed. And the older comic told me, he said, you don't never, ever let a comic take, you know, hear your jokes or you give them the material to your jokes because it's theirs now. Mm-hmm. 
-hmm. and that can bear you as a comedian because who was it? Um, Dale Curry. I was watching the Dale Curry Jones to talk about Steve Harvey stealing his joke and putting oh, it on shit. his special. He was on a show, Yo, and you watch the joke. You watch Dale Curry do the joke about his parents dressing him up as a UPS man for Christmas every year, just giving him a. Box. Oh no, that was uh, that was uh, what's his name? He was pissed too. I know that was uh, that's not Dale Curry. That's um, that's my man. Hang with Mr. Cooper. That's Mark Mark that's Curry. Right, sorry, Mark. I apologize. I'm thinking about the other, but Mark Curry. Yeah, I'm my bad. I, I, saw, I apologize. Saw that one. Yeah, stole it. Now you see him. You see him. You see Steve do the same exact joke. It's like, yo, on, on jokes, his millions of millions of views show. It wasn't even a special, nigga. It was his it was a show. Yeah, show. So you look funny. What? Like stealing jokes is not a stealing jokes is not cool. That's just, that's equivalent to somebody. Coming in the studio, hear, you hearing a verse, and then they walk out the studio because they no name artists. That verse was hot, and you take their whole verse, and it's on your album now. Okay. And, and niggas are saying oh, that's the greatest verse he ever laid. Mm -hmm. And nigga, and, and you a lesser star, you say, "Yo, that's my verse." They're like, nah, nigga, you couldn't have wrote that. It's like it's hard for you to be believed, but because who are you? You a nobody. I I ain't never heard on a song. He's like, "Nah, I was in the studio with Jay." And I said the verse, just saying Jay allegedly. He doesn't still verse. He thinks that shit in his head. So that's why I said Jay-Z, because Jay-Z off the top of the dome. Yeah. But that's that's what they do. These comics steal these lesser comics jokes. They go watch it and they take their jokes and they don't even do it as funny as the original one. It's, it's not even as funny. It's integrity because there have there, you know, there was a, a Bernie Mac whole thing there, right? Like where they was talking about Bernie and how Steve was hating on Bernie. Now I don't know. I'm pretty sure maybe it wasn't stolen. Maybe the maybe the little boy copied off of Bernie. I have no idea the timeline, but they Bernie and the little boy told the same joke. And it was funny as fuck. Both of them did it funny. Hmm. I just think it's a thing. You I can tell you the joke if you want. But, then I'm stealing. No, you're stealing. You're well, stealing. I'll I'll tell you the gist of the joke. I can't tell the joke, but it was it was the joke about um the little boy. I think uh Bernie Mac made it his nephew, little boy. Trying to get on the oh. school bus, but stuttering. So he'd be oh, like, yeah, yeah. and the bus driver will close yeah. the door on him, drive away. And finally, the mom came. Finally, the mom came and said, Why won't you let my son on the bus? And the bus driver said, mm -hmm. So Bernie did it like this, made it yeah. funny as hell. The little boy was like, Because he keeps, he was stuttering. So, it, you yeah, know what I'm saying? It's, but it's the same joke, same exact one. But that was the most funniest joke on the Kings of Comedy movie. That was like the most known joke. I know the little joke boy, you're talking little about. Boy told it on the Apollo. Mm. <laughs> mm. It's go on Look, TikTok, go on TikTok, and you'll see it. You'll see it. Yeah, I've seen it. I know what you're talking about. I've seen it. It I mean, just makes you. A, it happens in every industry, man. Rappers, so. the rappers take people's lyrics uh producers yeah. steal people's sounds Gillian Wallow medias haircut <laughs> like they saw you and then shave they shit and look at them <laughs> saw Kev and said I got one for him <laughs> just like the NFL stole your fucking beard yeah. idea for cheap straps oh <laughs> <laughs> That's all right though. My shit, I'll cut my shit off. My shit is your going. Chin. My shit about to be gone. Your shit would never go on top of your chin. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> Even when I try. <laughs> Even when I try, that shit just go thin as hell. That shit about to be gone. It's just, it's just, oh, it's just, as far as I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Your beard is telling you. This beard is telling you naturally you have a mustache face. You just won't listen. <laughs> Oh fuck you! <laughs> that, was a good one. that was a good one. Okay, yeah. come back. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> but, but that, but yeah. all of that shit, man. Like a lot of shit, cat exposed on that interview, man. It's like you, you gotta. Open, I'm like, you've been hearing about this shit, but it's like now you really gotta open your eyes, especially now in 2024, where in the new millennium. With now videos and YouTube and clips, everybody can just put this shit up on social media for you to judge. Yeah, worst thing that ever happened to these niggas. Think about yeah, it because it's closer and closer comes. to real truths being told nowadays. You know what I mean? Like the shit actually coming out the shadows. People 
really admitting to shit that's going on. I'll, I'm just curious to see how crazy it really gets. You know what I'm saying? Like how deep this rabbit hole really is. Because when that Epstein list really dropped, yep, there you go. That shit really hits hits the yeah, internet, man. and it's and it's a real it's a real oh, list. Then people gonna have to answer for that shit. For people real. already trying to answer for that shit. You know what I mean? Talk about it's oh, I was with him for this. I didn't know he was doing that, or yeah. I just. Uh, Chris Tucker said he was on the plane. He didn't even know it was his plane. He just happened to he was he was going to do some humanitarian shit. Bro, I said, bro, I that is a crazy thing I'm to be doing <laughs> on when you get on Epstein's plane. You don't know who plane it is. You're going to nope. do some some humanitarian shit with other humans. Here, here Chris, I mean, here, Chris Tucker, here, Chris Tucker, take net. Take this I'm net. Just saying, it's just, it's I mean, just, it's, it's just a weird. It just puts you in a weird position, especially why, why when it's a lot of wild shit going on. So, yeah, why, Epstein, why do I need a net for? Just go and visit <laughs> this little oh, no, 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 no. Just nets over kids as they run away. No, out of, you, know. you thought we were doing humanitarian? No, we're we're human tearing. <laughs> we're just scooping up kids out of the, out the islands with this big ass net, like it's tuna. Nets on kids. <laughs> hey, do you ever watch the documentaries on? Do you ever watch documentaries on Epstein and all yeah. that? Shit? Yeah, that shit was nuts. He, was had a, just, he had he had the I don't remember what the woman's name, but he had the woman yeah. that was helping him get all. Well, she did, don't worry, she did too, or is she locked up? I think she's she locked, locked up. Locked up. Yeah. Oh, that's the one. That's the trial. You ain't hear shit about. I forgot. Bro, you ever seen her? Like, oh no, he ain't seen ever seen what's shit. Some, what's some, I seen what's the movie called? Uh, War Supremacy. When the niggas get that little phone, they get that little uh little text on their little flip phones. That's what happens. These that's government part, dudes get. Yeah, I'm just saying. They how they be killing Epstein and them niggas. Them niggas get that get that phone call. Them niggas disappear for no reason. Epstein like, I really think player. like yeah. I really think <laughs> the government got a button. There's nowhere for him to go. Oh, and the camera broke. Yeah, yeah. Also, right. At the they, they said he hung himself. Right. Well, you know Allegedly, we all yeah, know what it was. We know he killed. Then he got killed. Nigga walks in. Yo, age. go on break. <laughs> yo, break time. They sent it. Uh, they who are you? <laughs> <laughs> they sent the nigga in there like John. You got a list, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> There's a list, Jeff. <laughs> Yo, crazy thing is, motherfucker probably visited him in his cell. Like somebody who's on that list. Like, yo, you, you going you, you, you think about telling? They got the power to be in the prison <laughs> in a room with him. I want to do a skit. Fuck, because that would be. A crazy conversation. Yo, you good? Yo, you all right? They take care of you in here. <laughs> <laughs> I heard you was talking. I heard you was thinking about telling on somebody. You ain't telling, are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? No, you can't. That's what you're, I'm saying. These you're a good guy. Yes, I guess I brought my boy Bruno. <laughs> I'm telling you, these niggas like movies like uh John Wick and the Equalizer and Born uh, Supremacy. Yeah, these niggas probably really got. Train assassins yes. that just work for the government that just do the most fucked up Bro. shit. Yes, they are. Yes, they were Navy SEALs. They were they yes, they well, have kid, teams, my nigga. Yeah, you're you're black ops, you don't exist no more. You don't exist. You do, we, you do what we tell you to do in order to protect this nation, even if it protect. means killing, protect. killing some, yeah, protect. I mean, even if it means killing the whole entire family, you do it. Yes. And make it look like a all make the way it down to the dog. Crash. Yo, yeah, make is, it look like a car crash. This is a real thing that all of this is real, but that's the thing though. You you you're so conditioned that you don't know what's real. I watched an interesting movie. It was called Leave movies. the World Behind, which everybody watched. I know. Mm -hmm. yeah, Leave the world watch. behind. I don't care what the symbolism symbolism was. This is a good movie. I enjoyed, I enjoyed it. it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. it. I think they just left room for it to be a part two, in my opinion. She was crazy. You know I mean? they, but if you there's another movie that's coming out in April called Civil War. If you get a chance to check the trailer for that out, that shit is it hits kind of home. And I what recently think of one in the Civil War. Man, I don't know. I mean, you're talking about if we if you're talking about the states that are involved in in the movies, you're talking about Texas, California. You're talking about the biggest I mean, states Texas, Texas in America. Win. Exactly. Texas you know what I mean? So 
<laughs> but but Civil War drops in April, I believe. But I watched a movie recently with uh David Batista. I don't know why I've been into like movies that he do. I think the motherfucker's funny as hell. But he had a movie out called I, I think he made it or produced it himself. It was called Bushwick, or it is called Bushwick, and it's like a it's like a movie where it's like a almost like a single camera, and it's well, literally about to take following, a start. <laughs> it follows it's following them through it's like one scene almost the whole movie you okay. know what i mean they don't really take breaks i guess but it was pretty much a movie about civil war shit happening in new york in bushwick and they trying to get four blocks to a place where they can get out alive but the shit it, it seems like it hits closer to home now with all these movies dropping out with the with the same message you get what i'm saying yeah. then you got these billionaires drop, drop making bunkers on the low, you know what I mean? They're trying to say it's a fad. They're trying to make it seem like, oh, it's just a fad. They got all this money. They're just trying to compete to see who has the best underground bunker for safety when when the world is in chaos. We shouldn't even know that they have a bunker. That's how you know it's some crazy, like they just pumping some shit out. Nigga, if I was a millionaire and I was making a bunker, ain't no way in the world. You motherfuckers don't know about it. Yeah. You're not coming and ask for no help. Uh, you won't even know where it is. Yeah. Nothing. The, the the trillionaires of the world, the big guys that was in charge, bunkers is off the chain. Their shit is, they shit is underground, I'm, self sustainable I'm, for a thousand years. How many niggas you thinking they'll be sucking dick in their bunkers? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want this cream corn? You need you hungry? <laughs> oh, oh, you want to upgrade from chicken to that, steak, huh? How Let many me see that urgent booty the, hole. Yeah, how, many X, <laughs> how many X's on the dick sucking calendar? <laughs> How many? Yo. <laughs> hey, yo. I think I'm gonna invite Dave into my bunker. Dave, he's uh, he, he, so he owes me some money. <laughs> <real good>, <laughs> All right, we're wrapping this shit up, man. Wrap this shit up. That just brings sucking dick Co for coming soon. We will be doing a whole new meaning. Sucking I mean, dick let me ask is crazy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm about to ask y'all, and I'm not the answering this face. question. If it's to say, if you, if we are in an apocalyptic. <sighs> Hold on. If we are in an apocalyptic situation and your family, not you, nigga, because we can't say y'all, your family, your family is on the line and to make sure that they eat, they on the they stomach touching their back, they can't do nothing, they can barely move. And the nigga say, I got it for you. The rich nigga say, I got it for you. I'll make sure y'all stay good for a long time. But I got this thing that I got, I want you to take care of. You, not her. You, what are we doing? All oh, taking rat poison. Yeah, we leave. <laughs> we come back. We coming back. Rat poison. We coming back. Oh, yeah. Learn how to hunt. Learn how to hunt. Yeah. So I got a bow and arrow in the crossbow. Oh, more at this point. It's oh, more at this point. Oh, y'all gonna risk you your gonna family. have to fight for his life. Y'all gonna risk your family. Bruno, with him. this nigga. Already, it's already a risk. Head off. Bruno, it's with him. already a risk. He got I'll cut Bruno. Nigga head off. We gonna eat that nigga. We gonna eat him. You oh, you'll eat a person. Oh, I got you. Oh yeah, we're gonna eat this nigga. nigga. Yeah, yeah, got no choice. You get niggas thighs. Throw nigga dick on off ball the sleeve. We don't eat the dick in the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you'll never get me, buddy. <laughs> you'll never get me. Can't put a new meaning to the word glizzy in the chaos. Uh, <laughs> the apocalyptic. Uh, I'm not eating no glizzy. We eating these niggas and we making real glizzies. Listen, I right, eat no real glizzy. Watch, watch leave the world behind, Kev. And just wonder what you would do in the in the in, in chaos. That's why I'm preparing now, dog. I ain't got no underground bunker, but I'm already okay preparing now. You definitely joke, got an underground uh, bunker. You got underground. You definitely got. I underground just bunker. I just bought I just bought me a brand new log splitter. Yeah, that's, that's, what, log splitter. that's what you call it. That's what, <laughs> that's what you call. It. That's what you niggas want to do to you. Go hit you with a log split. Oh, nigga. oh, <laughs> because I didn't just say that. Come on, man. Don't rubber my don't rubber my glue. Don't do that. That's don't rubber my glue. He go put a rubber on, go glue something to your ass. All right, you gonna take your jokes as as soon as you say it. He taking your jokes right there. Y'all let y'all talk and talk about. Uh, on that note, we are done but, on this episode. Fuck these niggas. I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> what nobody, talking just, about. nobody asks. Nobody asks why are all of them. Now asking? you be always asking. Won't you answer the question? Would Never. You suck dick for you and Erica to go in the bunker. Never. Sorry, Erica just gonna starve. And I, told, and I told her that I run fast. See, that's what y'all niggas don't understand. When the world is eat? over, I don't have to be the strongest. I don't have to be none of that. I just gotta run faster than all y'all niggas. You and I can. I'm pretty sure. Somebody tripping. Watch this kid. Watch this kid. Somebody tripping. Watch this Dre. 
if you're in an apocalypse situation and y'all starved and you're ready I just to said I would not. back. No, listen. Oh, okay. And little Dash is still there. Y'all making Chinese food out of him? That's fucked up. That's fucked up because I thought about that when I was watching Leave the World Behind and I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I'd rather catch a squirrel. I can't do it with my buddy, man. Can't you do it. Him? Nah, I can't do that, man. I got. I, I would have to look into his eyes. That's something that's gonna stay with me. Maybe it look like he makes some good General Tao's chicken. I have. Yeah, no I, idea. I know. I know racist guy, but that's my. Yeah, that's a part of my family. Yeah, See, it's Kevin. I, Kevin ain't never had no yeah. pets that he kept in love. Yes, I did. I did. Like, <laughs> I stole. They all got hit with BB yeah. guns or something. Right, shit. right. Y'all tortured the dog. My dog looks at me lovingly. fucking dog. I crazy. Home, my dog is happy to see me. You know what my mean? dog is a part of my family. My Athena was a part of my family. I love my dog. That was my baby. I know if my wife is angry at me, at least there's one person in this house who still loves me unconditionally. Unconditionally. And that's my yeah. little homie. So I could never do that. But and niggas I would let him in chaos. We 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 out there fucking shit up together. I tell you that. Yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't have that option. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Drake, your dog, your dog, Dre dog, uh, gonna fuck around and get him killed. <laughs> Drake can't hunt with his dog. Cam can hunt with his dog. Drake can't hunt with his dog. I mean, you can. You can leave Dash as like the bait. And you just stay right in the He's he he on animals. He on whatever out there. Right? Yeah, you know? I'll be screwed. I'll be you screwed. just tie him up to a tree as bait, and then as soon as the animal come to eat him, you save him at the last minute. That's Y'all eat for the night. <laughs> That's a hawk. Like he snatches that ass little ass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna make sure in our apocalyptic part, uh, all the gay, all the gay powerful people come right to your house. I'm sending them right to your house. I'm like, Kevin, I stole. in his basement, <laughs> which is <laughs> cooking right now. Got my house on the <laughs> on the thousand. <laughs> That's why he's hey, glistening right now. Yeah, man, <laughs> on that note, we definitely. I think this is the second nigga that told me my head glistening. These niggas want. These niggas want to be in power. We know when this podcast got to take off. We perform the act to make us get on. These two niggas. The light is reflecting off the oh, point God. of your head. So, <laughs> Yo, so this podcast. Oh, I'm ending this shit on that note. I don't care. Y'all better. I hope y'all say something. Hit the end button.